Well, here am I for Valor Canada on a beautiful October day on the Somme. Who said it always rains on the Somme? Um, and we're in the middle of farmers' fields. But the reason that we're here is this. This is a typical, very typical Commonwealth War Graves Commission Cemetery. What makes this unusual is that actually it is very largely Canadian. So let's go inside and just see what we've actually got, what to expect if you're ever lucky enough to come to one of these cemeteries. First thing to notice is that it's designed to look like actually an English country garden, uh, perhaps with a, a few Canadian twists. Uh, the Wargraves Commission uh, have very, very careful planting, so they try to include plants which are typical of the country from which soldiers who are buried here are, are um, familiar. Um, let's, let's go in. Gates closed to keep the animals out. Canadian maple leaf, so you know straight away. Got quite a number of Canadians here. And then we go in and we go through. First thing to notice here, just on the outside, is some fairly unusual burials. We've actually got a private Adler who had a military medal, uh, died the 17th of February 1917. He was buried in this cemetery and then the actual location was lost. Why? Because the cemetery was overrun in 1918 by the Germans and the headstones or would have been grave markers were lost. The same thing with the other ones. We've got quite a number there um, and it just says believed to be buried. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to look in either of these two areas to see if we can find the Book of Remembrance. Um, let's see where it is. And huh, it's not in that side. Let's go to the other side. Huh, I missed the obvious. I've just walked past it. Uh, it's always somewhere around. And there it is. That's our cemetery register. Okay, okay. Good. Every cemetery has a register kept in a bronze uh, box with a, a lovely door to it. It's got a visitor's book, uh, which can be filled in by visitors to say a few words. And certainly we have a few there. All of these at the moment are English or French. Um, sadly, because it's a brand new book, none at the moment from actually Canada, but they will follow. And here then is Regina Trench Cemetery, named after the trench that runs very close to where we are. This one is a brand new one, which is lovely. And it tells you who's in here, where they came from, and the grand total of Canadians that are known, 372, unknown, 129. It tells you when the cemetery was laid out and where bodies were brought in from. And then it also then gives you a plan of the cemetery like that, which means that's how you'll find your burial if you're looking for someone in particular. But the thing to notice is, well, we'll just walk up to it, is that in the middle of the cemetery, in this case here, as you walk towards it, we've got the Great Cross, which is otherwise known as the Cross of Sacrifice. The limbs of the cross meet in infinity, and on it is a Crusader sword. Not as a weapon, but a symbol of remembrance. Notice the point is pointing downwards. Clearly a very Christian symbol, but we've already passed at least one Jewish soldier. Not really appropriate for him. However, just to make sure that we cover all eventualities, the Wargraves Commission also include further up, and there we are facing it, the Stone of Sacrifice, otherwise known as the War Stone, which as you can see is an altar. And that means that whether you're Christian or not, you can come here and carry out an act of devotion. You'll also see on both sides, we've actually got little areas with seating in. Why? Well, why would you have that? The answer is in the 1920s, if you came over from Toronto or you came across from Halifax, Nova Scotia, or you even came from London, you probably would have one chance to visit. And when you came, you probably have one day. You don't want to come here for 10 minutes or an hour. You want to come with your picnic. You want to come with your bottle of wine or a bottle of beer. 
and the weather might be awful. So you want to be with your loved ones as long as possible. So when they built these cemeteries and they laid them out, they made sure there was somewhere to sit out of the weather where you can actually just have some time with your loved ones. Now, clearly, you know, having a cookout, having a, a barbecue isn't appropriate, but simply coming here, eating your sandwiches, although people get very po-faced about it, it's exactly what it was laid out for. And each of these headstones is absolutely identical. We don't use a Christian symbol because we have a multicultural army and that includes the Canadian army. But on it is the information about each of the individuals. And let's just find one individual from this book here. Let's go for the, the first person in the book happens to be a Canadian. Corporal A.D. Abbess, 153350. 43rd Battalion, Canadian Infantry, killed on the 8th of October, 1916. Almost exactly the anniversary today, the 9th today. Age 24, son of Arthur William Abbess of 27 Bedford Street, Hitch in England. So clearly an immigrant to Canada, serving in the Canadian Army, who was then killed and luckily for him, identified and buried in a known grave. And he is in plot seven, Roman numerals, grave A, number four. And that I know from this plan, which is fantastic, tells me actually he is in the back row of this plot here. Let's go find him. So plot seven, M, and we're just gonna go down now through the alphabet, L, K, J, looks like the graves are numbered from that end because although this guy here is indeed a Canadian, his 5th Canadian Mounted Rifles, 1st, 2nd of October 1916, French Canadian looking at his surname, let's go this way, let's see who turns up and we are looking for Abyss and uh, Here he is. One five three three five zero. Corporal A. D. Abbess, forty third Canadian Infantry, eighth of October, nineteen sixteen, age twenty four. A very typical age. They weren't all kids. Average age between twenty four and twenty seven. And he obviously, body was recovered, identified, and buried here. And unlike the British graves which have on the regimental badges, this is simply, in this case, the Maple Leaf of Canada. Uh, the Australians chose to use the Rising Sun of Australia rather than a regimental symbol. But he has received the honoured burial, um, which denied to other people. And in fact, if you look to his right, we have then number three, a soldier of the Great War, a soldier of the Great War, known unto God, clearly one of our unknown soldiers, of which there are a large number in here. Many of these bodies were recovered after the Germans withdrew in 1916 back to the Hindenburg line. This battlefield was searched and bodies were recovered. Let's just find another one and I think what we might do is go for a um, private waterfield, John Stanley. We've got his name here. 111507 C Company, 25th Canadian Infantry, killed on the 1st of October 1916. Huh, much younger, aged 18, son of Charles W. and Cecilia Waterfield of Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. I wonder if they ever came to see their son. I wonder if they've got the chance. And he's then in plot 4, B18. We now know how to do it. We go to plot Four. get that on the map plot four is in this case um, over there actually it's just ahead of us and he actually then is in B14 so if we go along here we're not going very far straight into plot four again F E D C, B, 
This must be then grave one. Ha. Yes, it is. And what we've got then is a lot of Canadians killed the following day. Sergeant Wilson, 60th Battalion, Canadian Infantry, killed on the 9th. An unknown Canadian, 18th of November, Private Miller, unknown soldier of the 102nd, Proudfoot, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And uh, for whatever reason, I miscounted, there is our private Waterfield. J.S. Waterfield, what did we say his name was? John Stanley. Hello, John. My brother's called John. Aged 18. He didn't have much of a life, did he? And what a change to come all the way from Nova Scotia to fall in battle out here on the 1st of October 1918, probably very close to where we are now. And unlike other people, his parents didn't choose to pay money for anything to be written on his headstone. This guy here, Sergeant Known, N-O-W-N, of the 4th Canadian Mounted Rifles, his family did pay for it. And what they chose to have written, he see died for others, thy will be done. Love, wife, baby, Lorraine. I wonder what his wife was called. But we know his baby was Lorraine. And when he last saw him. This is a place to come to and contemplate the cost of war. But at the same time, remember, this represents around 12% of the men that served. These men aren't unknown, they're known. The unknown soldiers are the men that went home and lived with their experience and probably never spoke about it. So remember them as well as the ones that we see here.